So this is the, you know, this is kind of the real reason why I'm, I'm so passionate about talking about content and context. I believe, I, I, I know that everybody acts and uh, does things for primarily the same reasons. We all uh, individually want the same thing. We all want happiness. We all want to feel like we're making a contribution. We all want to feel safe. We want to feel like our needs are met. Uh, we want to express ourselves and feel like we're heard and we're understood. Everybody has those same needs. You think of Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. Everybody has those same needs and we're all seeking the same thing in return. We just have different ways of going about it. And the things that we think and the things that we say and the things that we believe is, is just a product of our individual context. But we're all trying to seek the same thing. We're just trying to seek it in different ways. When you think of it that way, you can see how much more we have in common with everybody else and how much less actually divides us or makes us unique or different than other people. I believe that every person on this planet is simply a product of their nature and their nurture. One thing that's talked about a lot is whether we are, you know, a product of if everything that, uh, that identifies or every characteristic that we have is simply a, a product of our nature and, and our DNA and where we started out in life, or is it a, a nurture answer? Is it uh, the experiences that we've had along the way and, is it the upbringing that we had and the, the things that we experienced and the things that we saw and the things that we learned? Are we nurtured into the person that we are? Well, I, I really believe it's a combination of the two. And with that, I also believe that I would be the exact same thing as anybody else or that any of us would be the exact same product or the exact same thing as anybody else had we had their exact same nature and their exact same nurture. So if I was born in anybody else's shoes and I had all their exact same experiences in uh, succession after my birth, I believe that I would see, understand, and relate to the world exactly the same as they did. If, my, if I was exposed to the exact same things, then my context would grow exactly the same as another person. And therefore, I have no difference really between myself and another person other than my context and the things that I know, see, and understand and believe about the world. When we can realize that and approach people, with that understanding and relationships. And it really breaks down a lot of the barriers and a lot of the frustration and the separateness uh, and the lack of community or the lack of bonding that I think prevents a lot of us from, from connecting more closely with those around us. So when we get this stuff wrong, when we get this content and context wrong, what are some of the consequences? The first thing is it destroys compassion. For many of the reasons I just mentioned there, when you don't see somebody as as much more similar to, to you, and when you think that you're different than somebody else, and you think that you wouldn't possibly be similar to them or think or face the same struggles and challenges that they did uh, unless your context was like them, and you realize that your context would be exactly like theirs had you experienced the same things, had you gone through the same hardships, and faced the same challenges, and had the same opportunities. When you realize that we're all the same and that we would all think, believe, feel, and, and say and act the same, as another person, if we're a product of their nature and nurture, well, that really helps fuel compassion and understanding for other people. When we fail at that content and context, it breaks apart the human connection when we're not communicating effectively, when we're misunderstanding or miscommunicating, when we're having that frustration and that stress and that, uh, those missed opportunities. It really breaks apart the connection that we have with other people who are very much like ourselves. When you're not communicating effectively and you think people are different than you and, you and you don't understand that they're simply a product of their individual context and that fuels that can fuel judgment and hatred and ultimately violence against other people because you're not seeing them for your for their context you're seeing them for your own context and when hatred and violence and judgment are fueled that leads to more pain more suffering and more isolation for everybody and that isolation continues the breakdown. And uh, as I say here, that it erodes the very fabric of relationships. That pain, that suffering, that isolation is what, what breaks us apart and what separates people in their relationships and, and amongst families and amongst communities. And the more that we fail at the content and context, the more we'll continue to erode those relationships and the fabric of, of the families and the communities and the, uh, the people that we interact and bond with. Fortunately, when we learn to master this content and context and really understand it and speak into other people's context and help them grow their context and see them as a product of their context, not as something that's right, wrong, or indifferent, just as a product of their perspective 
and their relative values and their uh, and their understanding of the world. When we can see people of that light, it really helps breed compassion. Now we're judging somebody on the product or on the basis of their context and their experiences and what they've seen and what they've done and what they know about the world and about life. We see them uh, through their own eyes much more effectively, much more easily. And when we can do that, it really helps strengthen bonds and connection between us and other people. When we can see other people as a product of their context and we can understand the way that they see the world and that helps bring us closer and fuels that connection. And when we come closer together and when we feel that connection, that just fosters more understanding, more appreciation, more sympathy, and our ability to care for one another and to understand one another. And I think that when we come together more closely, when we bond, when we break down those points of divide, and learn to communicate more effectively, not suffer from miscommunication and frustration, then it can cure most of the pain and the suffering that we know. We're very social people. We need interaction. We need uh, interaction with others to live a happy and fulfilling uh, and a meaningful life. And when we break that down because we're not communicating effectively, that creates that pain and suffering. But when we can master content and context, when we can communicate more effectively, it really cures the source of most of that pain and suffering. And lastly, it's really the fabric of all relationships, our ability to communicate. As I said in the very beginning, communication, there's nothing that defines or influences our life more than our communication. That's communication with ourselves, communication with others, everybody that we communicate with at work and in the community and in our families. That communication defines the experiences that we have and the relationships and the bonds that we have. And when you can communicate more effectively, when you really understand content and context, then it strengthens that fabric of the relationships, the families, and the communities. I love this quote here by Abraham Lincoln, and uh, there's some controversy whether or not he actually said this, but I believe that he did. Uh, and it says, I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. And when I hear this, I think exactly of content and context. If I don't like somebody else, it's because I might not understand their context. If I don't like the way that somebody's acting or the way that they think or the things that they believe, it's because I don't likely understand what their context is, what experiences have they had along their life, what, uh, what books have they read, what mentors have they had, what schools have they gone to. And if I can understand that more clearly, then the, my chance of frustration or of judgment or of fear or of hatred is really alleviated because when I can see the world through his eyes or her eyes, then I get to know get to know them uh, much better, and just diffuse that uh, that tendency towards towards fear or towards judgment. So if we don't like somebody, I think it's because we don't understand what uh, why it is that they act in a certain way or why it is that they believe a certain thing. As Mr. Rogers says, how sad is it that we give up on people who are just like us? If we're all just a product of our own nature and our nurture, and we all just see and interact with the world because of our individual context, and we could be the same as anybody else if we had their same context, then how sad is that that we get frustrated and we give up on people who are no different than we would be had we lived their same life experience and had we developed the same context that they had? How sad is that that we give up on others who are just like us? Another thing that he said is, frankly, there isn't anybody that you couldn't learn to love once you've heard their story, once you understand how their context comes together, once you understand why it is that they see and they, uh, they relate with uh, the world, and once you understand the pains that they've suffered and the opportunities that they've succeeded at, and the way that they see, they understand they, the, the perception that they have, the comprehension that they have, and the way that they remember their world and their life, once you've heard that story, then there isn't anybody that you couldn't learn to love and appreciate once you know them and once you understand their context. But lastly, does this quote by Albert Einstein it says, peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. We can't keep uh, peace. We can't create peace. We can't cultivate peace amongst nations or amongst individuals, amongst friends or amongst uh, enemies. We can't create peace by force. You can't force somebody to have your same context. You can't force somebody to believe the same things that you do. The only way that we can really create peace and truly create peace is by understanding other people for who they are and for the, the context that they have and for the nature and the nurture. Because once we can understand them, 
then we can see the world as they do. And we lose that ability to judge another person, lose that, that fuel for the hatred and the violence.